Good evening. The Prime Minister has strongly defended MI5 after a senior judge criticised officers in the security service over their involvement in the treatment of a former Guantanamo Bay detainee. Lloyd New Lord Newberger, who's the master of the role, said some MI5 officers involved in the case of Binyam Mohamed appear to have dubious records on his treatment. The criticism was published by the Court of Appeal, although the government had earlier tried to stop it being made public. Daniel Sanford reports. <laughs> Binya Mohammed, who was tortured while in American custody and whose case took another extraordinary turn today, with a senior judge suggesting that an MI5 officer may have lied about his involvement with some of the mistreatment. The master of the roles, Lord Newberger, referred to MI5's evidence to a parliamentary committee. The security services had made it clear, he said, that they operated a culture that respected human rights. Yet in this case, that does not seem to have been true. Some security services officials appear to have a dubious record relating to actual involvement and frankness about any such involvement with the mistreatment of Mr Mohammed. Despite assurances given by the security service to the Intelligence Committee of Parliament in 2005, despite assurances that they didn't know of mistreatment um, of, of suspects um, under American control, there was mistreatment and they did know. So well, this, is, this, is now, this is now the position, the, the, the security services have misled Parliament. The case has had a tortuous 18-month journey through the courts and even these criticisms were briefly removed from the judge's ruling when Jonathan Sumption, the government's barrister, questioned them before they were reinstated in an amended form today. The Lord Chief Justice said he was concerned that a damaging myth may develop that in this case a Minister of the Crown was somehow permitted to interfere in the judicial process. This did not happen, he said, and it's critical that if any such misconception may be taking root, it should be eradicated. The Binyam Mohammed affair is not yet over. The police are still investigating the actions of one MI5 officer involved in his interrogation. Daniel Sanford, BBC News, at the Court of Appeal. Well, after the ruling, the Home Secretary said he was deeply disappointed at the ruling and defended the security services. We don't condone torture or mistreatment. We don't encourage others to do it on our behalf. We have led the world in seeking to eradicate the use of these kind of measures. And as the judgment, I think, fully uh, endorses, there is a very strict ethos of human rights within our security service, which in the most incredibly difficult position, uh, situation, they adhere to whilst protecting the public from terrorist attacks. Well, I'm joined now by our correspondent Ross Hawkins, who's at Westminster. Ross, uh, there we had the Home Secretary, we've heard the Prime Minister, and also the Foreign Secretary has been weighing in on this. Something of a remarkable day, the day on which the Prime Minister, the Home Secretary and the Foreign Secretary all rushed to the defence of MI5. Gordon Brown said they couldn't always defend themselves, but he could defend them. And indeed, he spoke to the head of MI5 today to express his gratitude for his work. And when we heard from the Foreign Secretary, David Miliband, uh, we heard a fairly robust defence as well. This is what he had to say to one of my colleagues, Peter Hunt complete right to express their uh, opinions. Uh, that's important in a free society. Equally, the government doesn't have to agree with everything that they say. Ministers take incredibly seriously the dual commitments that we have to uphold our laws and our ethics on the one hand and to protect national security on the other. Where there's any serious suggestion that wrongdoing has happened, then there is a, a proper system of uh, judicial and police uh, accountability and in one case the police are now investigating that. Now the shadow, the former shadow Home Secretary David Davis and the Liberal Democrats are both calling for a judicial inquiry. For his part the Prime Minister says that he will publish the guidance on treating detainees. It's a promise that was made back in March. He says the Intelligence and Security Committee is looking at that guidance and that will be published. No guidance on when though. And for that committee itself, the Intelligence and Security Committee, that was the one the judge suggested of being misled by MI5. No comment from them today. but. My my understanding is they believe they were not misled. They weren't happy with MI5's record keeping, but they don't think that they were deceived. Uh, while, as you point out, the shadow, uh, former Shadow Home Secretary David Davis did weigh in uh, quite strongly on this, would it be fair to say 
that uh, uh, the Conservatives have been somewhat muted in any kind of criticism of the government's handling. In other words, they could be in office in a few months' time and they don't want to annoy the security services. Well, the Conservatives have said the government has failed to draw a line under these allegations, but there is obviously that possibility they could be in power. And if they were in power, they'd have to consider not just that relationship with the security services, but the relationship with the US as well. Because remember, underpinning all this is whether or not there should have been released information that the CIA had passed to MI5. That was released, but that was at the heart of this debate. And it's those relationships which uh, have to be considered by any foreign service Secretary, Prime Minister or Home Secretary trying to deal with this knotty issue. And, and just one final point. The question really here is about oversight, isn't it? Yes, fundamentally it is about who is watching what the security services do. Now, the government, and indeed David Miliband's point, he went on to say, was that that was perfectly correct. He says you have this parliamentary committee which has the ability to look at confidential information and is doing that job. From the other side of the argument, people like David Davis will say, in this case, things have got to such a point that only an independent judicial inquiry can sort this out for good. It has to be said, very little feeling of any appetite for that from the people who might be in a position to bring it into force here in Westminster this evening. Ross, thanks very much. And